Over a thousand years ago, something came to a small settlement on the River Tavy that changed Tavistock's fortunes. Founded by Aldolf, the Earl of Devon, and brother-in-law to the Saxon King Edgar, Tavistock Abbey became one of the wealthiest and most influential places in Devon. With the Abbey came hospitality for travelling visitors, fairs and market charters, which provided trade and employment for local people, education and a revolutionary printing press. This inscribed stone found near the town centre suggests there was a small Celtic Christian settlement here as early as the 5th or 6th centuries. But the Benedictine Abbey, established by Ordolf in Tavistock in the 10th century, was the centre of life in this area for over 560 years. When King Henry VIII ordered all of the abbeys and monasteries in England to be closed down in 1539, Tavistock lost both a beautiful set of buildings and the landlord who had presided over the community's affairs for centuries. You can still see many surviving remnants of the abbey today. The precinct wall in Stillhouse Tower by the river marked the boundary of the abbey. Next to the traffic lights and the post office is the Abbey Chapel, still home to a Christian church, which is thought to be the surviving abbot's lodgings with its finely decorated porch. Across the main road is an archway called Court Gate, which was almost certainly the main entrance to the courtyard of the abbey. The rounded arches inside date back to the 12th century gatehouse, which was encased within a larger gatehouse with pointed arches in the later Middle Ages. On the other side of the Bedford Hotel is Betsy Grimble's Tower, another surviving gatehouse to the Abbey, with a stone coffin and the garderobe or toilet chutes and drainage channels which ran down to the river. Across the main road from here are the arched remains of the Abbey cloisters, which are half buried in the graveyard of the parish church. This enormous Abbey must have dominated Tavistock and as well as its remains, many of the buildings you see today, like the Bedford Hotel, stand on its footprints.